What's up, y'all? This is Brave, and I'm back for another review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. This is season 11, episode 6, and the episode is titled um, Broke Down Palace. Baby, let's get right into the review. So, we start this episode off with Scrappy having a conversation with Mama D about how he's about to go to mediation. And he already knows that it doesn't matter what he says, Bambi is going to be against him. And I'm just like, yeah, that's what happens when you're going to have a divorce with somebody. So he's preparing for that. And the next thing you know, we see Bambi have a conversation with Erica Mena. So Erica Mena goes on to tell her, like, you know, I got into it with Scrappy or whatever at South by Southwest. And then Erica goes on to say how Scrappy may have a baby on the way. Because according to Mama D, who happened to tell Chaotic and Erica Banks, that Diamond missed her period and she may be pregnant. Honestly, I know that Mama D stirs up a lot of mess. We have seen it throughout the years and throughout the seasons. I'm sorry, but I would have never believed that because I don't think Diamond would have told, you know, Mama D that. Like, I don't think Mama D and Diamond is kicking it that hard. So that Diamond can say, girl, I missed my period. Um, I might be having a baby by your son. That's weird. And also, I don't think the Scrap told his mama that. Because I think that he has stopped telling his mama a lot of his business. But, you know, this is where we need to keep this storyline going. Now, according to Bambi, she's like, good for them if he has a baby on the way. I'm like, girl, I know how you try to act all tough right now. But that had to have hurt your feelings. Or whatever made you feel some type of way. The fact that you're hearing that your husband, because he's still technically your husband, may have a baby on the way. Stop playing. Now, one thing that I do want to point out is the fact that Erica did say that, you know, she talked to Scrappy and Scrappy said that it's not true. However, did y'all catch the part where she's like, you know, I was talking to him, but I was also saying him and Safari. Ah, ah, baby girl, this is the problem. You keep projecting your relationship on theirs. Get out of these people's business, number one. And also, Erica, I need for you to let this whole safari thing go. We're tired of it. We really are. Y'all have gotten a divorce. You have moved on. He has moved on. We honestly don't even want to hear you mention Safari's name at this point. I want to know what Erica has going on. Show me some of these little Tubi movies that you're doing. Like, you can't show us no behind the scenes of that. You find an L.A. or... Wherever you film these little uh, Tubi movies. Because last time I checked, y'all, Erica Mena got about 10 movies on Tubi. But she can't show us none of that on the show. Her reading over a script or something. We got to hear her whine about Safari and jump into Bambi's business. Come on now. All right, y'all. So now let's move on to, um, what's her name? Spice. She is in the Cayman Islands still. Um, You know, she and Mita sort of kind of made up, got into it, kind of sort of made up Um, on the last episode. I don't know what that was. Honestly, I'm just tired of Spice. I am. And also, I really want to see Spice with dark hair. I would love to see Spice with, like, black hair. I think it would look so beautiful on her. But she is stuck on wearing these blue and green and whatever other color wigs. I can't make those choices for her. Nonetheless, let's get into the scene. So we see her and her team and dancers. They're preparing to get ready for the show. And one thing that I will say about Spice is that she always brings her career onto this show. Out of all the people who have been on this show as of lately, she's definitely one to always see her performing somewhere. We saw that she got Grammy nominated. Like, We've seen things within her career happen for her on the show, unlike the majority of this cast. Um, So, yeah, we actually see her perform. You already know her story. She didn't think she was going to ever be able to perform again, but Baby Girl's performing. Great for her. Uh, One thing that I will say is that it is very clear that her fan base really do love her because the way they were chanting Spice's name, they were definitely there to see her perform. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and move on to this family matter scene that we got with Yandy. First of all, I'm trying to figure out why Yandy is in the credits. Because I feel like this is the first time that we've seen her this season. Maybe it's the second. We're six episodes in. I have seen more of Carly Red than I have seen of Yandy. Yandy ain't even filming scenes with the crew. 
or, you know, the people that's supposed to be on the show. What, what are we doing here? But nonetheless, let's get to the family matters of this whole situation. So they're celebrating her, um, this thing that she does, this event that she has, where basically a bunch of like small businesses come together so that way they can network and, you know, sell their merchandise. Cool. Love that she's doing that. She has gathered up all the kids. She done gathered Infinity up as well. And Little Man DCs. I'm like, oh, okay, because we really about to give this whole picture perfect moment for the family. Cool. Man DCs is talking about how he's going to go to LA so he can film um, an interview with Shannon Sharp. And he talks about how, you know, he basically wants to tell the youth that there's another way for them to go because, you know, he used to be a drug dealer, but now he's not. And he also let us know that he has some type of construction company that is building homes for, you know, the less fortunate, you know, people who are probably low income, which is, that's amazing. That's great. I mean, I will say that I do like the fact that Mandizzi has been able to turn his life around, been able to stay out of trouble, figure something out that can make him money that's not in the streets. That's great. Um, as far as Yandy goes, great that her businesses are successful in Atlanta. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. Let's go ahead and move on. Y'all, why did we go into the studio with Amy? And you have Erica Banks coming through. I don't know if she was doing her ad libs or if she was doing her raps. I don't know what that was she was doing in the uh, studio, but I wanted her to stop. Okay, so at some point, Erica Banks, she comes through or whatever. And according to Amy, she feels some type of way. And that's because Erica Banks basically ghosted her when it came to working on a song together. She sent her over the music, but Erica basically didn't respond or whatever and of course Amy feels some type of way and I was like well maybe she didn't like the song that you sent her and she didn't know how to respond now according to Erica though she says that she just was super busy or whatever she didn't have time to get to this little feature that she was supposed to be doing for Amy now one thing that I can respect is the fact that Amy did come to Erica be like you know what happened with the song i feel like you pretty much was playing that you wanted to work with me okay fine but maybe once erica started listing all the things that she has going on like setting up sessions with jock and working with chaotic oh why we got to bring up chaotic baby this led to a whole nother situation because now amy is letting her know how her and chaotic kind of have a little situation ship going as well as letting us know that Erica also has something going on with Chaotic. I'm like, what in the sister wives is happening right now? Please tell me. <laughs> so basically, according to Amy, at some point during South by Southwest, um, her and Chaotic kissed or whatever. And they've also done all types of random other things in the past. And I'm just like, again, what in the sister wives is happening? Because you, according to you, you and uh, Erica are trying to build a relationship and a friendship, but you low-key have messed around with Chaotic. You also know that he's interested in Erica. So now I'm trying to figure out if you want her to be your third, because Erica goes on and, you know, she's like asking her questions about how far Amy and Chaotic have gone or whatever. But also in her, conf no, I'm sorry, in her confessional, she said that she has a thing for Chaotic and that's between her and Chaotic, but she's not going to tell Amy that she's interested in him. And I'm like, okay, but now I'm looking at you crazy because she's also letting you know that he's interested in her. Can y'all just be a thruple already and we can go ahead and move on? All right, so let's go ahead and move on to Scrappy. He is moving his stuff into Mama D's garage. He is staying in a hotel because he would rather stay in a hotel than to stay with his mama. I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. Um, I assumed that Scrappy had his own place because, I don't know, I feel like something he said when he was talking to the band, when, he, when they were like packing up, Something like, oh, I'm helping you move or whatever. And I'm like, oh, he's saying that as if he already got his own spot. But I guess he doesn't. And I'm just like, so 
you're not going to try to, you know, have a spot for where your kids need to come over. Y'all just going to hang out in the hotel. Okay, sir. So, basically, it's him and chaotic or whatever. They go in the house. Mama D has cooked food. And, baby, chaotic is scarfing it down. Like, he ain't leaving no crumbs on that plate. And I'm just like, you know what? Mama D may be a lot of things, but it's clear that Mama D can cook because he was tearing that food up. So Chaotic decides to get the mess started. He brings up the fact that Erica Mena was all up in Scrappy's face, arguing on behalf of the BAM, and how, you know, I guess he brought out some type of receipts and, you know, she kind of backed up off of him because then she started crying and playing victim. Baby, why was Mama D response that she likes her as an actress? Have y'all have y'all seen her movies on Tubi? I said I can't. <laughs> How is Mama D promoting you on Tubi and you not promoting it, Erica? So y'all, why did Chaotic go on and on about how you know Scrappy is in good hands? He's safe. Um, he can be nurtured. All these things, and I'm just like, Chaotic, where are you going with this? <laughs> And the way Scrappy was looking at him, he didn't know where Chaotic was going either. But baby, Chaotic knew where he was going. Because Chaotic goes on to say, you know, you and that baby with Diamond? I cannot lie, y'all. The way Scrappy looked at Chaotic after he said a baby with Diamond, it's like he's like, I know this Negro is not. <laughs> I know this Negro that I get on national TV saying I got a baby with Diamond. We not doing this. So he's like, ain't no baby with diamond. So now you have Mama D having to clear up what's been said. So she's like, you know, I told you that at your listening party that diamond told me that she's late. And <laughs> Scrappy's like, late for what? Because I ain't slept with this woman. Now, one thing that I can say is that Scrappy has been adamant that he has not slept with diamond. And at this point, I kind of believe him. I do. Because... He could have easily, you know, been honest and been like, yeah, me and Bam ain't together. I mess around with Diamond. But like he said, my mama probably made this up because why would Diamond even tell Mama D that? That don't even make no sense. All right, let's go ahead and talk about this next scene, which is Erica Banks and Young Jock. So basically, Erica Banks, she is going to do a song with Jock. Jock has now become her mentor. I kind of gave her a side eye when she got so excited because he brought in some type of bottle of liquor. Like, girl, calm down. Um, so they're doing this song. Um, it was okay for two non-singers to decide to sing on a track. Because, like, when I heard Jock's part, I'm like, okay, you try to give what? Knock off future? Like, what's happening here? Um, yeah, we got to stop with these non-singers singing on the tracks. I would prefer if they hire actual R&B talent. But this is what we get with current music, so it is what it is. All right, let's get to this conversation that Jock and Miss Erica Banks have. So basically, she's letting him know that, you know, Amy feels some type of way because she didn't do a track with her. However, Amy mentioned it to Chaotic and... You know, Chaotic was telling her, like, oh, you know, that's weird, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. I understand that Erica feels like she should be able to, you know, move how she wants to move. But it is kind of crazy that you're willing to do a song with Chaotic, but you're not doing a song with her. Like, I'm not trying to be funny or whatever, but and I don't really know anything about how long it takes to write a rap. But if you're a rapper, it shouldn't take you two, three weeks to do a rap for somebody like Amy Luciani. It should probably take you maybe a day or two. And in your spare time, you may write a line here, write a line there. Because pretty much, you know, you're only doing a verse. You're not even doing a whole song. But nonetheless, I think for me, I think I'm looking at Erica crazy is because you talk about how you're working with Jock and Chaotic, but it is kind of crazy that you don't want to work with another woman. And I feel like it may be because she feels like her career is a couple levels above Amy's. Because let's be honest, 
Erica, I think, has a bigger following than Amy Luciani. And also, people have heard her songs before. Because if I'm being honest, I ain't never heard of Amy being a rapper. That's just me. I just remember she dated some, like, YouTuber back in the day. So now you have uh, Erica going on and on about how, you know, she has a thing for Chaotic, sort of, kind of. And then Amy's talking to Chaotic. Like, I feel like once she started to tell Jock about the whole chaotic situation, he kind of tuned out because it seemed like his only focus and response was on the fact that you were talking to this woman about possibly working together and then you basically reneged because now you're too busy working with other artists. So then he basically tells her, like, you know, sometimes your approach and the way you come off to people you know, people don't be feeling that or they may feel some type of way because of the type of energy that you bring into them. And I can absolutely see that being a thing. And like Jock said in his confessional, like, you don't know, maybe Amy may have the next big hit song. You don't want to burn that bridge. And you're also too new to be burning bridges over things that's like kind of dumb because she thinks that this is all over chaotic. But yeah. What also stood out to me, y'all, was the fact that Erica Banks was like, oh, I hope I'm not too drunk, but we got to do this performance. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, I'm giving such a side eye because it's one thing to maybe take a shot or two, you know, to kind of calm your nerves before a performance. But for you to possibly plan to be drunk that day, but you talking about, oh, but I'm a rapper, I'm a rapper. Are you really? Because you don't take your craft seriously. But nonetheless, let's go ahead and move on. All right, y'all. Let's talk about the Misery Loves Company crew, which is Sierra, Bambi, and Erica Mena. So basically, the girls are coming over to uh, Bambi's new place, right? Glad that she was able to find a place, you know, for her and her kids. But one thing that stood out to me was the fact that I guess one of the little boys... He wanted, what was it, a cake pop or whatever. And to me, it seemed like she had, like, pulled it up on her phone as if it was, like, Uber Eats or something. Because she was like, see, the car is, like, not far from here. You have to wait outside for it or whatever. And I'm just like, so you want to send this child who's under the age of five to go wait on a cake pop from an Uber Eats driver? What is happening? (laughs) Like, the way that whole little setup was phrased and worded, It didn't make no sense to me because it wasn't like, oh, your uncle is bringing this or, you know, your auntie so-and-so is bringing that. That was so strange to me. I don't know. That whole you got to wait outside. You're telling your child that that's a problem because next thing you know, this little boy leaves the room and I'm just like, so where did he go? Because I know he ain't going to wait outside for Uber Eats driver. But let's talk about the mess. All right, so let's talk about this mediation. So basically, they just got done with mediation, and Bambi and Scrap clearly are not on the same page because Scrappy, he said that he's willing to pay half of the kids' child care, and she has a problem with that because she says that he's basically making it seem like he doesn't make any money. And I'm just like, okay, but technically, child care usually includes paying for the kids' schooling, paying for nannies, paying for anything that has to do with the child. So I think that's absolutely fair if he decides that you're going to pay half, I'm going to pay half. That makes sense to me. I'm sorry. If we're trying to have an amicable, you know, divorce, what's so wrong with him saying, I'll take half of the child care and you can take the other half. Okay, so then she mentioned something about how he wants to take her kids from her. I guess like have the same thing that Melody and Martell have on Huntsville, that one week on, one week off because they both live in the state of um, Georgia. They both live in Atlanta. So this is not the type of situation where, oh, one parent lives so far so they have to keep them you know, over the summer or something like that. No, it's one week on, one week off. That's what it seems like. And she doesn't agree with that. It's because she probably wants full custody. But 
here's my thing. I think that we can't have it both ways as women. We can't. I get it. But Scrappy didn't fight for the marriage. Scrappy didn't do all of whatever you wanted him to do. However, y'all can't be saying, oh, I want my kids to have an active father in their life. Oh, I want my kids to be around their dad. Because, you know, all black kids, we got to have a daddy in our life because we love to yell that out, right? So if the man decides, oh, I'll take him for one week, she takes him for the next week, a week he's switching off. Technically, that's him being an active father. And if I got him half the time and you got him half the time, then what child support needs to be paid? Because I'm paying for my portion when they're with me and you're paying for your per- your portion. Technically, that's splitting things down the middle. Like, I know that we love to get child support, alimony, all the things. But let's be for real right now. Which one do we want? Do we want these men to be active fathers? Or would we rather put them on child support so that way they hardly see them? Because that's basically the the premise of child support, if we really want to be honest. It is that most of the time... These men are not active fathers because you put them on child support. So they feel like, oh, I'm paying you to keep these kids. Is it right? No. Should these men want to be actively involved in their children? Absolutely. And they should be want to be in their lives. But let's be honest here. If I make how much ever money that I make, whatever... I get the kids a week on, a week off the same way you do. What am I paying you child support for? Because I'm doing my half when I'm with them. Bam, what's your income? You should be able to cover your half. Because the way you make it seem, Bambi, is that this man, he don't do nothing when it comes to the finances. It's all on you. You and your shimmer store has been carrying the family. So you should be okay. Which were half of the, you know, situation. And I know many people probably won't agree with me on this. And that's absolutely fine. All I'm saying is, if the, you guys are going to do basically a 50-50 split with these kids, I think it's absolutely fine for one party to not have to pay child support and make it all messy. I, which, one we, which one are we doing? Would you rather him take the kids Or would you rather him be a barely weekend dad? Choose what you want. So the BAM goes on about how uh, Scrappy likes toxic things. That's what he likes in his life. He likes the drama. And according to um, Sierra, she's like, you know, that's what he grew up around. That is, you know, the way he was raised. And according to Bambi, because now she's talking to both of her friends about how he may have this baby with Diamond. She's like, you know, if it's true, then it'd be better for me. And I'm like, how is that better for you? Because I'm thinking from the perspective of if this man has another child, then that is taking another amount of time away from your children. Because you already know Scrappy has another child outside of this marriage, which is Imani. So that's one child that he got to go spend time with away from your kids. But if you add on another one, like, your kids are starting to get the short end of the stick. But then I was like, oh, she means from like a divorce perspective. Because if he has another baby on the way, that proves that he was cheating during the marriage. And maybe that's something that she can use to provide her with, you know, some type of evidence that he was doing wrong in the marriage, and maybe she can get some money out of this. I don't know. I don't know where Bambi was going with that statement. Nonetheless, you have Sierra chiming in about how all they men are dogs, Safari, Eric, and um, Scrappy. Okay, that was that scene. Let's go ahead and move on. So now we get to this whole, like, I think it's like a publicist event. And I believe that this person represents Erica Banks as well as Sierra. And we see a few of them, you know, the cast members walk the red carpet. We see Erica Banks. We see um, Young Jock. And what was interesting to me was the fact that Young Jock was like, yeah, we're about to perform this song today, but it's not mixed or mastered. A.K.A. It may sound like complete mess, 
but we still got to get up here and perform. So we see that Chaotic is there, as well as Scrappy. He actually arrived with Mama D, or whatever. And one thing that I will say is that Scrappy loved him a two-piece set. He loved him a two-piece short set. But baby, let's get inside to this actual party. Because you have Erica and Chaotic. I'm sorry, Erica Banks and Chaotic going back and forth. Because she's trying to get down to the bottom of the him and Amy situation. I said, I feel sorry for Young Jock and Kendra in this situation. Because they look like they sat there with them. And it was like, why am I here? Why am I sitting with this young couple over going back and forth over foolishness. <laughs> I'm like, where's the Rashida and Kirks of the whole situation? Put Kendra with Rashida. They about the same age. They men about in that same age range. Stop putting these old people with the younger folk. Please stop that, uh, MTV. Now, I must say that I was very annoyed when Chaotic was in his confessional talking about how, you know, he's single, ready to mingle, and basically, let's let the best woman win. No, sir. No, 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 no. Because the the problem with this is, these are two women who have the possibility to actually be friends. This is not like you have a random woman over here and another random woman who are not crossing paths. You need to go ahead and choose whichever one and let the other one know early in this situation that you're moving forward with this one or that one, whichever one you want to do. Because I'm sorry, I think that is very messy for all three of them in this situation because Erica, she has feelings for chaotic. Amy has some type of feelings for chaotic. And I don't see how you can continue a friendship when y'all over here basically fighting to win who gonna get this man. So now I'm noticing that there may not be a friendship between these ladies because Chaotic got in between them. And that's very sad. So next thing you know, Yandy and Mendeecee show up. Um, I said, this is a lot of Yandy and Mendeecees. They just showing up to random places. Nonetheless, they get there. Yandy goes to talk to Mama D and Scrappy. And he basically talks about how they're about to go through a divorce. And Yandy questions him on, you know, has he done everything that he can do to basically fight for his marriage? According to him, he has. He has fought for his marriage since the beginning. I feel like Scrappy has said that every time this question has been asked to him. Because please know, we have watched this show and they always ask him, Scrappy, are you fighting for your marriage? Scrappy, what are you doing for Bambi? Scrappy, 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 right? Here's the thing. No one ever questions Bambi what she's doing to fight for the marriage. That's number one. Number two, I don't think that Scrappy even knows how to really fight for a marriage. But that right there is because I think he lacks a lot of emotional intelligence. And honestly, when I think of the whole like Bambi and Scrappy love situation, I feel like they've always had struggle love. Like, I feel like the money was never right. <laughs> I feel like the love was never right. Like, yes, they had a bunch of kids back to back to back, but they never even got to be in love while they were married. They literally jumped into a marriage, had a bunch of kids, and then they never really had like a honeymoon phase while they were married. It's very interesting, but let's get on to this performance because... Young Jock and Erica Banks got up there and performed their song. And I don't know, maybe it's me, but that audio sounded terrible. But according to them, everybody was rocking with the song. So, next thing you know, Scrappy, I guess he ends up getting shots for, like, everybody. Because originally he thought that, you know, Bambi's friends were going to come for him. But they did it. They kind of rocked out, stayed where they were, away from him. But he ends up bringing um, shots over or whatever. And there's Deb Atney there and Erica Mena. And I guess he ends up handing the drink to Erica Mena. And she's surprised that Scrappy even did this. And he's like, well, I was doing this type of stuff before, you know, basically him and Bam had drama. So he's not about to change now. I said, okay, cool. We on a good foot. Baby, that ended right there. Because Erica was like, well, <laughs> let's go ahead and get the mess started. Because she asked the question, 
why is it that the, in this generation, the men don't ride for you? And Scrappy's like, I rode. I rode for mine. Oh, but then she hit him with the, so why don't you want to pay for child support? I said, girl, what does this have to do with you? Not a thing. So, of course, Scrappy is upset. He's like, I don't like that. I don't like that. And then he ends up turning to Deb and he's like, you know, I pay for it. She's not about to air me out. So, Erica cuts in or whatever. And here's my thing. I have to say that I'm actually on Scrappy's side with this because I feel like when Scrappy said that he was going to have to uh, uh, pay for it because she's airing him out or whatever... He's saying that Erica's about to say this reckless stuff and then I have to deal with the backlash. I have to look like the bad guy in this situation. And I'm sorry, Erica, you're not about to air me out in a room full of my peers, number one. And you're not about to do all of this on TV. Because honestly, it's one thing for Bambi to tell her friends the stuff that's going on in her marriage or should I say in the divorce at this point but it's another thing for her friends to then approach Bambi's husband speaking about child support this has nothing to do with Erica so Deb she's questioning you know Scrappy like why is everybody getting involved in your business like what's going on so he blames Bam because Bambi told her friends this information and then they try to bring the drama to his front door and cause havoc in public spaces. Erica's like, no, you need to blame your mama for that. And I agree. I will agree with that. Mama, mama D has been over the years. She has overstepped consistently. But so have you, Erica. And so has Sierra. So Erica starts standing on a table and Scrappy met her where she was at the table because he starts standing on a table as well. Now, did he need to be up there? No, but he wasn't going to let her stand over him. And also, I think Scrappy is fed up with Erica because this is the second time he's seen her and she started some mess with him trying to fight Bambi's battles. Like this is not we have not seen Bambi approach Scrap since they was packing up their boxes. Yet we've seen Erica twice approach this man. So because she mentioned his kids and his mama, he brings up her oldest son that honestly she never mentions. She only talks about her kids with Safari. So now she you can tell she wants the conversation to be over. Um, she gets taken off the table out of nowhere. Here comes another argument between Scrappy and Sierra. Now she yelling at him that he needs to uh, know that he's wrong. He is so wrong and he don't feel like he's wrong because this woman is mentioning his kids. Now, here's the thing. I think that um, Sierra may not have heard the entire conversation and maybe she just might be chiming in knowing that Erica is fighting Bambi's battles. Or she could be saying that, you know, he's wrong about Bam in general. Right. But I'm just like, <laughs> Sierra. You, of all people, don't need to be commenting on anybody considering the shenanigans that's going on in your household and how your man is rummaging through your daughter's things and how your man wanted you to be a single woman knowing you had two damn kids or the fact that you date men who are terrible to you in general. So here's the thing. Y'all, some type of way, we get outside. Scrappy is outside and people are telling him to calm down. And his response is that as a man, Erica can't come to him crazy, basically. And then we see Sierra. She talking to Mama D and she is like, you know, Mama D, you wrong. You always starting all this mess. And again, I feel like Mama D was absolute, absolutely wrong for saying that Diamond may be pregnant and it's possibly Scrap's baby. But at this moment, Sierra, Sierra, I need you to stop talking, please. So Scrappy, he go over there and go shut that conversation down as well. <laughs> He's like, you know what? You're not about to be talking to my mama like this. Then we got him and Sierra going back and forth. I'm like, oh my God. So she mentions how Mama D said that Diamond was pregnant. Baby, Diamond ain't even been on the show yet, y'all. We saw her say what's up to Scrap that one time. You would think that she was a full-time cast member. 
Um, so then she ends up telling Scrap how he needs some healing. And Sierra was like, I wish my friend, I wish my friend had the balls like me. I, I wish my friend had the balls like me. I said, Sierra, who are you kidding? Who are you even talking about? I know you're not talking about Sierra Glam Shop. The same woman who got dogged out by Scooter, got dogged out by BK, and now you're getting dogged out by Eric, who, again, you had to plan to sneak out moving from being with him. Who does that? But you talking about some people having the balls to do something. You should have just straight up packed your stuff and told Eric, I'm leaving you. But no, remember you were sneaking and hiding. Like, I'm sorry. I just feel like Sierra, Bambi, and Erica is a terrible combination. I really do. I feel like they are not a good combination of friends because they let their own situations affect their friend situations. Like, they are the definition of misery loves company. Like, for real. But let me get back to the story at hand. Now, following her talking about how she got the balls that her friends ain't got, she goes on to talk about how, because this is what Scrap do. This is what he do. I'm like, girl, this ain't even your man for you to be so big in the chest about this. So, Scrappy is like, over it. You can tell he fed up with the whole situation. This man didn't argue with Erica multiple times at this point. He didn't argue with Sierra multiple times at this point. And neither one of them are his wife. He says to her, this ain't even my B. So I ain't got to argue with her. Oh, now she's offended that he called her that. I was not offended. I wasn't. I felt the same way. You ain't got to argue with her. She ain't even your, she ain't nothing to you. That's just your, your wife homegirl. You good. Let's keep it moving. But (laughs) y'all, oh, let me bring this up. Mama D, not you yelling about how, because bam, do witchcraft. Where did that come from? Nothing was warranted for her to even yell that out. Mama D is a mess, an absolute mess. But nonetheless, that was my review, y'all. I am so tired of Erica and Sierra, as well as Bambi at this point. I want them to all find something to do. Like, show me what Bambi does in a day. Not her with them kids. Like, what's going on with Shimmer? I don't know if that's hair or a store. I don't know what that is. But what's going on with the Shimmer stuff? Like I said earlier, Erica, what's going on with your Tubi movies? Sierra, what's going on in the glam shop? Give us something. Because I'm tired of hearing about y'all and y'all relationships with these piss poor men. But y'all, that was my review. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. And I will talk to y'all on the next one. Bye, guys.